20% tax coming into the play which also means that you know um uh, cryptocurrencies see look uh, let's let's not talk just about cryptocurrency because it's just one small piece in the whole virtual assets or the digital asset space and the digital assets have created their own space now um which which um one part is of course crypto but then the other part is nfts and then there are a bunch of other digital assets that you can hold with with the budget coming in you know it's very clear that you can actually uh, hold um, uh, virtual assets um, as as like treat it like digital gold so you can hold it and then um, uh, sell it at a profit uh, later on uh, if you're trading but uh, you know let's look at the underlying technology which is blockchain which is really changing the world right so that actually is is the underlying asset or the underlying key technology um, which 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 is uh, which is very 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 cool and um, with the startup innovation system kind of embracing that technology as a part of uh, you know india i think that's really remarkable because it's a, it's a very bold step to kind of embrace the technology and also embrace uh, cryptocurrencies and digital assets as an asset class um, i really think this is going to really foster a lot of innovation and it's going to really help help the country in 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 general when you talk about how do you um uh, go about uh, uh, creating social impact or how do you go about solving basic social problems using the power of technology right so um i really think it's a it's a very bold move and it's a very very um, <clears throat> remarkable um uh, move and i was really impressed with the with the budget this time uh, you know which basically legitimizes the the digital and the virtual asset space as a separate asset class so and and 30% tax is a very very good thing i think because um because i think see ta- taxation I- I- if you're making profits is very very important as well and i think uh, it also because of legitimization it will end up preventing lot of frauds which have been happening in the space um and um, i think it's a it's a very great move i was and and also sorry we asked about cbdc so i think that's really again i am i'm a big proponent of blockchain as a technology uh, and i've been working in the space for a long time now and i think it's a it's a great move again because we are moving towards uh, uh digital india which basically amplifies the whole mission uh we have um, you know the company that i have founded we've actually created the india's uh, only uh, layer 1 blockchain um, and and the world's first sustainable blockchain ecosystem and i'll talk about it later uh, but um, i think uh, we we are actually uh, you know we are going to be talking to the finance ministry as well in india to kind of uh, uh, use our blockchain to build um, the the currency on because you actually need a layer 1 blockchain if you're building a currency and i think that's that's really great so i am really um as i said i'm really really very impressed with uh, with the budget this time and with with cbdc coming in so it's a great move india positioning them, uh, themselves as as a global superpower right the biggest thing i think we need to do is kind of help solve or help uh, expedite progress towards the um, uh, achieving the united nations sustainable development goals for some of you who don't know un sdgs is just a language to kind of simplify uh, social impact sdg 3 talks about um, uh, health sdg 4 talks about education sdg 5 talks about uh, gender equality sdg 6 talks about clean water and sanitation and so on and so forth so i think with with blockchain technology if you can kind of use that technology for the betterment of humanity you can actually really create uh, help help in financial inclusion help the unbanked bank i think so if india has to uh, you know uh, position itself as a super power right you have to achieve sdgs and for that you basically need to solve basic problems like gender equality like edu- quality education because a lot of people don't even have access to clean water a lot of people don't have access to clean sanitation there are so many unbanked people i think about 35% so to get all of that i think blockchain would really pro- uh, uh, be a be a remarkable technology to kind of help un- uh, bank the unbanked solve social problem like i said around the sdg so you know gender equality health sanitation um, more use more renewables i think that's going to be very very important if we if we want if we see ourselves as a as a global uh, a player and 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 being one of the uh, superpowers i think that's very very important the biggest challenge that people often face when they start up is uh, you basically have to believe in yourself where the, when uh, and, and and once you believe in yourself then the world starts to believe in you right you can't expect your parents your spouse your boyfriend girlfriend relatives whatever right to uh, and and friends to actually believe in you until you believe in yourself so i think 
one big piece is to actually uh, uh, believe in yourself uh, so basically you know because you as a founder and ceo know where the company is going to go after 3 years 5 years 6 uh, uh, sorry 3 months 6 months 1 year 3 years 5 years and until you and and then you are should be able to materialize everything according to the plan and according to the vision that you envision and to make that a reality right it takes time so i think as an entrepreneur you need to be very resilient and if you don't if you're not resilient i don't think you're even fit to be an entrepreneur so i think that's one of the biggest traits an entrepreneur should have um uh which and and so that's one and then of course the second i think i would say is to dream very big so until the dreams are uh, are chimerical it it shouldn't be even called a dream so i think the dream like for instance i've had since i was a child is to basically impact a billion people positively right so the dream should be big and the and the startup you're building should be around that dream and your passion so your passion actually is very 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 important and that's because you might have to work long hours you might have to go through a lot of hurdles and you cannot sustain that if you're not passionate about it so if you're doing it just for money you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to be in the system for long um, you need to be passionate about whatever you're trying to do that should give you chills whether it's day or night so i think if that's the case then you 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 should definitely start up and i advise everybody to kind of just start up but make sure you have a passion and then have an idea around that passion which basically converts your passion into a sustainable business model i think that's very 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 important um yeah so this you know these are my two cents when when you come when you uh, think about um, entrepreneurship another thing i would also advise for for people in their 20s i think it's very very important to um uh, if possible to uh, not take uh, uh, loans so uh, i am i've been against uh, uh taking loans because that actually i think um uh, uh you know forces you to um to go against uh, your dream against your passion because you're forced to work for somebody even if you don't want to so but if you don't have a loan if you don't have a family to take care of um, i think you should definitely start up because the learnings that you get in a startup are just immense and they really um, uh, make you a better person and and it really helps you in the long run so i think you should be you should definitely um, start up in your 20s that would be my advice sure sir and uh, regarding the, you know how is the ecosystem uh, of uh, in india the startup ecosystem is it getting friendlier day by day do you see more startups getting the required uh, you know boost by the government by uh, you know even foreign investors how is the system uh, how do you see the system in india improving it's never been easy to start up than ever before it's very easy and i think the The, the 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 getting getting funded or getting capital is very very easy like for instance we raised 21 million in just 20 days when our seed round so it was it's i think very very easy now and especially if you're if you're uh, you know uh, building your company around a future technology it's even easier but and also if you have an mvp if you've created a product which can really help people i think that's that makes it easier to obtain funding so that's just one side of it i think the second also i would say the government is more 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 friendly towards uh, startups which also helps a lot um, uh, in terms of scaling so like first thing of course is to build a build a build a product and then after that it's about adoption so i think government is very uh, uh, you know pro pro startups and then even with taxes right there's tax relaxations um uh, if you're if you're registered in the startup india mission so i think that helps a lot as well you know i've been kind of promoting a concept of a fifth industrial revolution for the last 15 years now and it's it talks about how can you make money while you do more good to the world so the more good you do the more money you make and to prove that thesis i've been kind of setting one business after the other the current business i've also founded is also a big um, uh, works at the intersection of um, uh, technology uh, profits and purpose so basically if you can interlink profits and purpose i think that's the right way to go um, i think uh, one advice to entrepreneurs again i would say is if you can impact people in a positive way right like if you can really create a product which basically makes the life of people around you easier convenient uh, more abundant then i think there is no um, there is no um, uh, one stopping you from uh, building a successful company because in the end the the your customers are your prime um, uh, are your prime stakeholders investors I, i would say would always be second the first is customer so if you know you don't need to treat customers first and if you're building a product for the customers and also around the sustainability piece okay so like with with covid coming in i think it's it's really facilitated a transition from the fourth industrial revolution to the fifth very quickly because people and consumers have started to realize the power of health the power of um um you know spirituality uh the power of uh, being healthy 
uh, and and I think uh, businesses which are actually more socially responsible are ending ending up becoming more. Uh, profitable so for instance a, a sale of a juice a can would obviously be more uh, you will see it becoming more than a cola and that's probably because uh, people have started to realize the power of health um, and the same happens with um, you know people are starting to realize the power of uh, renewable energies when it comes to uh, against coal so if you're building a business around you know using coal versus somebody building a business around um, uh, 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 renewables i think uh, renewables would end up becoming more profitable so profitability will uh, so, so sorry sustainability will define the next profitability uh, in, in the years to come if you are sustainable um, if you're really embracing sustainability at the heart of your company it's easier to become profitable now which is great and that's the idea of a fifth industrial revolution that i've been kind of promoting in fact we're helping the world entirely go from for profit to for benefit which is entirely about this concept and when you ask about you know what advice i would give to budding entrepreneurs as i think earlier also said um the first thing is to dream very very big um uh, it's it's great to have chimerical dreams because until you dream big you can't uh, go ahead and execute it and that's why it's called a dream second is don't be scared of um, you know people around you if you're starting up because initially it might be hard but uh, but that's the that's the uh, test that you need to pass before you actually end up becoming successful uh, successful entrepreneur and the third one is you know uh, be proud of your failures so you know before you end up launching a successful company most of the people have failed a lot of companies and i too have done that and it's completely great uh, it, you should be proud because the ultimate part is learning right you not the end goal doesn't define what you've done the end goal uh, would definitely be um, beautiful even if you've had 100 failed ventures you can have one successful one and after that and it can really change lives of people around you uh, i think so so basically keep at it and that's why i'm saying build something around your passion if you're building something around your passion you would never get tired of failures right you would just treat them as learning experiences which will actually empower you to launch another company uh, after a failed company and then probably that can be be the next big thing right so until you have it in you to you know basically create the next i mean the next apple or the next google right uh, then then you can easily do it if you are if you have a abundant mindset and and uh, you think you think you dream dream big so i think that's very very important and as i again i think we previously also mentioned stay away from a real estate loan stay away from education loans um because that actually um kills your dreams uh, you're forced to kill your dreams um uh, and 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 you know not following your dream um i i call it like a um dream suicide or like a mental suicide because you're actually killing a dream just because of few people around you so don't do that because i've seen a lot of people actually not starting up just because of their peers or peer pressure or you know parents pressure don't do that because once you actually start up the journey is very very exciting and it's very rewarding as well is my my ifty days was basically more about uh networking i really think that you know if you're in an mba college make sure that you network a lot because i think that really helps in the long run if you, i mean right now like you know it's easy for me to hire people in the company because i already know so many people so i think it really helps if you're well networked in in the in the in the b school uh, circuit i think the second big thing is to basically i think it it also uh, uh, uh you know in, if you're joining clubs right so i was basically i think the head of the entrepreneurship club i don't even remember the name what it used to be called because it's been long but uh yeah so it it really really helps in i think e sell so it really helps you in in basically uh, kindling it kindles your entrepreneurial spirit and and i think that basically helps you when you're launching a startup so i think i, I would say you know the mba school journey or the ift journey was very very cool because i made a lot of good friends who uh, uh, i think which is very very important and the network actually stays with you for for your life so i think make sure that you meet the most lo- lot of people you get inspired and and also you learn on the side right so because learning see i'll be very honest learning you can even do on youtube most of the things that you learn in college you can also learn that on youtube so i think i am been a big proponent of uh, making a good network because your network actually defines your net worth and also the new technologies that are coming into the play with blockchain they're sometimes not even taught in schools right um, and and we are actually currently working with aict in a bunch of colleges to actually roll out a blockchain curriculum also in school so i think learn educate yourselves about new technologies and most importantly work with your peers right because they could end up becoming your co-founders when you start a company i think that's why i'm stressing on the power of the network 
uh, when you are hanging out with a set of 150 people in for two years, what helps is you build really good connections and really good friendships, and through that you can actually end up founding companies. So I think it really kindles the entrepreneurship spirit in you. It basically inspires you to do more because when I was in um, IIT, I used to think you know all the 150 are more intelligent than I am uh, because they probably had more IQ. Uh, all the you know bright people come there so so yeah uh, so which basically uh, basically keeps you um, at the bay which basically makes ma- makes you think that you know you need to achieve more you need to achieve more because everybody is so talented so i think it's a it's a good place to be in and i'm very uh, you know happy that um, i i started i dive if you would like to answer your favorite spot like what would where would you guys hang out or your favorite hanging spot with your friends oh favorite spot favorite blue club is very good there yeah so we used to chill at so basically i tell you the most fond memory we have is you know discussing on what you want to do in life at 5 am after staying up the whole night after at for going to bablu dhaba at 5 am so i think that's that's one of the most fond memories that i have from iit you know chilling out with friends at 5 am and not sleeping the whole night but still being inspired and motivated to keep up and and be the be awake the whole night was amazing so i think that was very very good and the oh uh, yeah and used to have like great parathas so that that was great like great food So you know, bonding over paratha is amazing, right? Like used to drink paratha and chai, and then uh, chill with friends. I think this is cool. Yeah. So the next question is: If you would, if you could pick one celebrity, play you in your biopic, who would it be? Kamal Hassan. The so next is uh, your favorite holiday destination. Uh, Cancun, Mexico. Uh, two things at the top of your bucket list. Bucket list. Well, it's so long. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. One thing is, uh, of course, I want. I'm. I'm planning to learn flying. So, um, yeah, l- learn like flying. Um, yeah. Before I buy a private jet, I think I need to learn flying. So I think that's <laughs> that's one. And then uh, uh, learning learning sailing before I buy a yacht. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, then the next question is what is the strangest thing that you have ever eaten so the strangest thing that i have also consumed is vodka chai it was not good at all lisa i think uh, alumni relations committee is going to get in touch with you more often because we see that you bring this set of expertise that we have not had an alum bring so thank you so much sir for taking out uh, time and uh, we consider your insights extremely invaluable and we hope that uh, we stay in touch and we get your guidance